The TRAPPIST-1 planetary system is unique among star systems known so far, having seven Earth-sized exoplanets. Could any of them have life? According to our new toy in space, the James Webb Telescope, they are ideal candidates for it. But how can Webb find life there? And today, let's discuss how the James Webb Telescope will search for life on seven Earth-sized planets. Last year, when the James Webb Space Telescope was launched in December, it took over the mantle as the world's premier space telescope from the legendary Hubble. This new and flashy telescope is aiming to provide key insights into our own solar system as well as distant worlds around other stars. One of its primary objectives is TRAPPIST-1, an exoplanet system of seven Earth-sized rocky planets around an ultra-cool dwarf star. Star. Now, when we say ultra-cool, we do not mean you can go skiing on this star's surface. An ultra-cool dwarf star is still a star, with an effective temperature of less than 2700 Kelvin, and that's approximately 4400 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's still blazing hot by our standards. But the exoplanets this dwarf star offers are different prospects, as three of them are within the habitable zone of the system's star. That's the Goldilocks zone, within which planetary surface temperatures are capable of sustaining liquid water. TRAPPIST-1 is located only 39 light-years from Earth. Cosmically speaking, that's like being right around the corner. All of its seven planets are intriguing and have been the subject of many studies since their discovery. But just because three of these planets are in the habitable zone doesn't guarantee that these planets are capable of sustaining life. The habitable zone is just one of many conditions that need to be met to make a planet subject to our next real estate boom. These conditions, or indicators, are known as biosignatures. The most important of these biosignatures is the composition of their atmosphere. An exoplanet needs to have significant quantities of methane, oxygen, water vapor, carbon dioxide, and many other important gases in somewhat similar proportions to those observed on Earth. Until now, we didn't have any way to determine these details of any exoplanet, but according to a study, the James Webb Space Telescope might just be the game-changer we were desperately searching for. Astronomers believe that the Webb Telescope will be powerful enough to detect signs of life at the distance of these Earth-sized planets by analyzing their atmosphere for biosignatures. In fact, the Webb Telescope is trying to accomplish this task right now as you're watching this video. But how can the Webb Telescope be successful in achieving something no other telescope could accomplish in the past? The answer lies in the stars, literally. These closest potentially habitable planets are still tens of light years away from us, even from where JWST is orbiting at L2. But this new telescope has got some new tricks up its sleeves. You see, when a planet is between our observation point and the exoplanet system's host star, we can use sensitive telescopes to detect how much of the star's light is blocked by the planet in its atmosphere before it reaches us. The proportion by which the light dips is called the transit depth and will differ in wavelength since gaseous elements each selectively absorb certain wavelengths of light more than others. Using a specialized telescope called a spectrometer telescope, we can analyze light by wavelength to see which signals are lacking compared to when the star is not being transited. Therefore, we can tell which gases are most likely prevalent in the atmosphere. This technique is called transit spectroscopy. To be fair, this is not a new technique exclusive to the Webb Telescope. Transit spectroscopy was first used with Hubble in 2002 and has been in common use for well over a decade. So then why couldn't Hubble accomplish the same objective? Why haven't we already found life-sustaining planets among the stars? What's so special about JWST that only it can analyze the atmospheres of obvious candidates for habitability like TRAPPIST-1? 
While certain steps of transit spectroscopy were available with existing technology, the most important measurement in identifying biosignatures, the shift in transit depth, was out of our reach with other telescopes. With telescopes that predate Webb, we were able to determine the size of the star and planet and separate the star angularly and spectrally from the light emitted from the multitude of other extrasolar objects. But because planets are considerably smaller than their host stars, the dip in brightness or the transit depth observed when a planet transits the surface of a star dozens of light years away is also quite small. And that's where the previous telescopes were lacking. They were unable to measure the minuscule shifts in a transit depth's wavelength at this distance. Telescopes like Hubble were able to detect the atmospheric composition of exoplanets in categories like hot Jupiters and hot Neptunes, or in other words, planets much, much larger than our Earth and nowhere close to being habitable. The combination of its location and advanced instruments grants JWST an infrared sensitivity greater than any previous telescope, which will allow it to characterize the atmospheres of Earth-sized exoplanet systems like TRAPPIST-1 for the first time. Researchers suggest that the Webb telescope should be able to detect and analyze any atmosphere fairly quickly, pretty much in a year or so. Since the planets are all close to their star, that means their transit times are relatively short. For those who don't know, transit time is the time it takes for a planet to cross in front of its star from our viewpoint. Webb should be able to confirm the atmosphere, or lack of it, within 10 transits or less.